Hello friends. I'm coming to you with a second part of um, this piece in the storm because uh, something has come to me having just um, released the first part um, and I'm just going to read again that passage um, where Jesus calms the storm from uh, Matthew 4, 35 to 41 because other things have come to me since to really share with you and I'm quite excited about this. I feel somehow I'm being told that this is a real um, metaphor for the process of spiritual awakening itself, for coming to God, for turning to God. And I just want to read through some of that passage again and then take each little line to illustrate this. So Jesus calms the storm. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? So that's the first part. And I just want to say that um, when it says that day, when evening came and he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Evening came. To me, this means there's a certain maturity, a time in your life when it comes to a spiritual threshold that we cross. Let us go over to the other side. What's this other side? We're going from something with him across some sort of threshold to the other side. Hmm. To me, this is the process of spiritual awakening that happens within the background of actually the absolute. So leaving the crowd behind, they take him along just as he was in the boat. So he is in the boat with us. And uh, leaving the crowd behind, hmm, it seems that there are times when we have to mature beyond a certain stage where we're not no longer chasing the things we were chasing in our younger life. You know, when we're younger, we're getting educated, then we're getting a job and maybe getting a family and all that kind of thing, possibly, possibly not. But um, uh, we are sort of doing a lot of busyness in life and there comes maybe a time of maturity where we're called to something deeper where we're called across some sort of threshold to be more one with God so but he is with us in the boat and there were also other boats with him other boats other groups of people with him. Could that mean other faiths, other ways to God coming with him? A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. So as I said yesterday in the video previously to this, this is the storms of the mind, this is the adversity of life this is the coronavirus this is other things that hit us hard in life you know maybe uh, relationships fail or or divorce or death of loved ones or some tragedy in our life that hurts and is painful maybe some sort of rejection or something terrible sort of happens these are the storms of our life but they're important part of this process of the awakening process. This, we have to be bitten by the uh, difficulties of life and we 
feel this suffering and pain. And Jesus is with us in the boat. God is with us through this. Um, and uh, But it's interesting that it says Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. Well, how extraordinary is that? It's almost like he is untouched by these phenomenal elemental changes. And as I've said before, I think that points to that when we are in the harmony of God, when we are one with the Spirit, when we're flowing in, in the flow of grace, the unforced, unforced rhythms of grace, we are in harmony with the divine Spirit. And the things that batter us in life just don't touch us in the same way. They don't have the same uh, power because somehow we, or in this case, they're illustrating that Jesus is rooted in a calmness, in uh, a rest and in a beautiful, uh, you know, he's sleeping on a cushion. It's like we can feel cushioned by grace when we have faith in God through the adversities of life. I think this is what it's illustrating. So um, the disciples woke him, woke him up, awakening, you see, and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? A bit like now with this adversity of coronavirus, there are times when people can doubt, people can you know, when, when often bad things seem to happen or pain happens to people, you often hear that people can, can uh, in a way it's understandable as human beings, we can blame God or feel anger or feel doubt at any kind of, you know, many people can, uh, something painful can happen and they completely lose faith and leave the, um, leave their church or their, their temple, whatever their religion may be doesn't really matter what the religion is, people can still lose faith and trust in life because of bad things supposedly happening. Um, but, so they're saying, don't you care? We can doubt. Does God care about us in these times? But we don't necessarily see the bigger picture and we don't necessarily see the blessings and the silver linings in the clouds of our life. Many people are seeing the positives in this time as well as the tragedy, as I called it, the ca catastrophic gift of um, coronavirus, you know, this pandemic. Um, there are so many blessings of people having to stop and be still. And we come on to this now. Um, so there's that doubt. Don't you care? Of course he cares. But he was not feeling the same uh, turbulence that they were feeling in this phenomenal storm. So he got up and he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Quiet, be still. Now, don't we hear from so many sages and prophets of God that to be quiet, to stop, to stop the chatter of the mind, to stop our own selfish drives and ambitions, cessation of desires, to even now, in a sense, we as a world almost have grinded to a halt. And this is why it's a tremendous opportunity to be still. To be quiet. If you often listen to people like Papaji or Ramana Maharshi, there's so much depth of stillness, quietness. Just not giving attention to the mind's chatter, to its suggestions, to its worries, to its anxieties. No, turn away. 
You know, the storms of our mind can come with all sorts of, oh, might happen to me, I might, I might die from coronavirus, or, you know, what's going to happen, and fears, and, and it can be fed by our attention and grow into a great storm, and we can feel a great amount of suffering in our own heart through our own following of thoughts. So quiet, be still, is the message here. Stop listening to that. Your mind is not as significant as you have thought it to have been. And when we begin to withdraw our attention and our allegiance to that psychological mind, not the, you know, the, 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 the mind that is the intelligence of life, the psychological mind that tells us um, more about who we are, who we think we are, and what we should be doing. And there's, this, there's often a fear and anxiety with it, because it's rooted in ego. But anyway, so we have this quiet and be still. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. Now, as I've said, you know, this is, this is a literal story of a calming of the elements by Jesus, but it's showing, I feel, in a deeper metaphorical or allegorical way, it's illustrating the calm and the peace of being restored to your rightful mind, to your natural mind. To the natural state that Muji calls Sahaja, the natural state, Nirvana, heaven, Peace within the storms is restored. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? And as I said yesterday, of course, we can, we can lose faith in these times of trouble. But I want to say one other thing about this, and that is that in this journey of the awakening to spirit, Difficult times come when, when we, in a sense, I'm going to say get closer to God, but it's really when we're really on the, uh, you know, on the, on the realisation that God is within us and totally available to us. And when we're really on that, um, on that um, path of self-discovery, and we really begin to see it really is possible to fully awaken to this. Then a storm will come. As Muji often says, a storm will come. And this is like the backlash of the, of the ego mind, of the psychological identity. And it, it still causes a lot of trouble and wants your attention. And this is the most testing time. But... The Lord is with us. Peace is there. We need to trust in it, turn to it, value it, drink it in, immerse ourselves in the truth. Trust in truth, say yes to truth, Surrender our life and follow the, the, the messages that bring us peace, joy in our hearts, bliss. In Christianity, the Trinity is called Father, Son and Holy Spirit. In the Hindu tra tradition, you get the Sat, Chit, Ananda. Sat, meaning God, absolute. Chit, meaning consciousness. Or you could say Christ consciousness. And Ananda, joy and bliss and spirit. It means the same thing. Sat, Chit, Ananda. Um, and just for the last little bit of this. As the storm ceases... And Jesus asks, why are you so afraid? Do you still 
have no faith. They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So this shows at the end that, that despite Jesus' pointing to the complete peace, they were scared. They haven't received his message. They may have been amazed and maybe that process would have unfolded in their in their awareness, but they were still scared, terrified, it says, rather than comforted. So this shows us that we can still not, in a sense, trust this. So I just wanted to show you that this had come to me this morning as a sort of a part two to illustrate the power of this story and how it speaks of our journey across this threshold to discover our true place of peace, our true position, but not to underestimate what can appear and what can come as temptations within the mind, as, as a backlash of the ego to keep us within the phenomenal realm, thinking we're separate and isolated and we've got to do it by ourselves. As that egoic identity, we do not even really exist as that, as psychological, mental, separate, autonomous, isolated self. There is only God. There is only this silence and peace always available as this unknowable mystery of the divine, the indivisible source of all life. Absolute peace. Calm. light and love. So my friends on, on this level as well, we are one. And we are one in this boat together. And we can find our true place. Thank you. Blessings to you for this holy and sacred week. I pray that the death and resurrection of the story of uh, this holy week of, of Christ is um, also a time where our world can die to what is false, can turn from what is dark and evil in this world, but to turn to the love and the light and the vibrational field of formless awareness that is ever present, full of peace, full of love, full of grace. May we abide in and fall in love with this. Peace to you. Thank you.